what makes us argue? Gay marriage, that makes me argue. National debt, man, don't get me started. War, taxes. I never argue about my smartphone. I never argue about which dishwasher should be designed next. How come my smartphone and my dishwasher keep inventing new ways to please me, while the IRS and the DMV keep inventing new ways to frustrate me? If my iPhone offered me two apps, and we only got to choose one every four years, and then forced everybody to use the most popular app, everyone involved with making iPhones would feel free to suck as much as they wanted. Fortunately, I have thousands of choices, and I can choose and unchoose at whim. So everybody involved with making iPhones excels at pleasing me. What if governments adjusted to my needs as rapidly as my iPhone? This idea started when somebody thought way outside the box. Outside the box of countries, outside the box of continents, and looked at the world's 193 governments as an ecosystem. To understand this idea, you have to let go of your political opinions and look at the nature of progress itself. Why did a molecule copying itself in the ocean eventually give rise to elephants and bioluminescent jellyfish and, and your brain that spontaneously decodes what I'm saying? What causes a hand ax to eventually give rise to Paris? A year ago, this clicker was dust, scattered to several continents. What draws the minerals out of the earth and merges with a million engineering insights in separate brains and then puts it right in my hand, right when I need it, for five bucks? We know the answer. Variation of forms, selection for the best, recombination, millions of experiments competing simultaneously in an ecosystem. Governments can't evolve to please us because they don't compete to please us. We can't click our mouse and choose a competing government. We don't have the freedom to choose. Milton Friedman became one of the most famous economists of the 20th century because he cultivated a gift for explaining why all of us voting on one solution doesn't work as well as all of us trying any solutions. And everybody said, great idea, Milt. Nothing we can do about it. Government is a monopoly. His son, David Friedman, wrote a whole book about how he thought this could work. And he threw out a famously whimsical proposal that burners might recognize. He said, imagine if citizens lived in house trailers say, on an open, flat, featureless desert. <laughs> Every time a bad leader did something people didn't like, they could just drive to a competing government. Imagine if governments had to compete to keep citizens, like Apple competes to keep customers. An economist said, <laughs> Friedmans are fantasizing about trailer parks now. Man, those guys are desperate for solutions. Well, there's something in the Friedman genes, because his son, Patry Friedman, was hanging out at Burning Man one day, feeling really thirsty, and he said, you know, humans already live on the ocean. The cruise ship industry makes billions. If millions of families lived in modular, detachable houseboats, and communities could only form if people chose to attach to each other. They could leave whenever they wanted. They could form a new community whenever they wanted. We'd have a primal soup. 
We'd have variation and selection, the same magic recipe of evolution that drives rapid progress in ecologies, technologies, markets, and science. We'd experience what Patry called a Cambrian explosion of governments. That insight changed my life, and it changed the lives of innovators all over the world. Billionaire Peter Thiel read Patry's blog and said, how about a million and a half to get started? Right now, the pioneers moving west aren't homesteaders, they're seasteaders. Lissa Thaler Jones, uh, she's a wealthy biotech uh, investor. She invested her personal fortune into replacing fossil fuel with pond scum. Oil doesn't come from the dinosaurs. Fossil fuel is the product of fossil algae. We put carbon into the atmosphere by burning ancient algae. We take carbon out of the atmosphere by growing new algae. Pond scum are trillions of tiny solar panels that store energy. Lissa is transforming carbon pollution into biofuel. Her goal is to end Middle East wars. Investors have put 12 million so far into her plan. Ricardo Radulovic plans to feed 9 billion with greenhouse gas. Small algae is pond scum. Big algae is seaweed. Seaweed pull more carbon out of the atmosphere than rainforests. Seaweed is the most nutritious protein plant on the planet. Um, fish don't synthesize their own omega-3s. They get it by eating algae. By mixing seaweed flour with wheat flour, Ricardo is ending malnutrition in the, in the developing world, which is where he comes from, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation just increased his grant by 10 times. Neil Anthony Sims is turning carbon pollution into sashimi. Uh, algae pull carbon out of the water. You feed the algae to fish. You feed the world with sustainable uh, sashimi while purifying the oceans. Sustainability is not ambitious enough. Who wants to sustain the polluted oceans we have now? Neil's goal is to restore the ocean environment at a profit. By using algae, Neil is transforming this into this. A million pounds a year since 2008. 70% of the world's fresh water is used for agriculture. Very roughly half of all land is used for agriculture. Algae farms require no fresh water, no soil, no pesticides, and it, they can expand to any size. The only thing they need to ramp up to colossal scales are carbon pollution and nutrient pollution, two things humanity is producing with enthusiasm at the moment. Corn and cow farms produce unhealthy food and pollute the oceans. Algae and fish farms produce healthy food and purify the oceans. So here's the seasteading plan. We turn our corn and cow farms into algae and fish farms. We free up the fresh water for the poor, and we give the world's farmland back to nature. You ready to think big? Patrick Takahashi, the father of the Blue Revolution, wants to put all these ideas together. He plans to feed and fuel the entire planet with upwelling from the deep ocean floor, which is rich with nutrients in the exact proportions necessary to sustain life, to grow Ricardo seaweed, Lissa's pond scum, which you use to feed Neil's fish, Imagine millions of blue jobs causing a mass immigration comparable to the gold rush. These people are serious. They're attracting millions in investments and nobody knows about it. The rest of humanity argues about which politician is going to lie his way to saving us. Elections are not worthy of our attention. Remember, remember this? 
and this, we need to stop paying attention to this and start paying attention to this because this plans to feed the world, restore the environment, and provoke a healthcare revolution. Burners don't even know that they inspired this. Pot Pottery Friedman conceived his idea when he imagined 10,000 burning mans on the water. We found a little figurative island out here in the barren desert where we proved the impossible works. We proved gift economies can work. We proved that burning man freaks can rebuild thousands of homes in Katrina and Peru and rebuild a Vietnamese temple for free. Now we need to get out from under the default world, get out on the water, experiment with more communities, and prove more impossible things are real. If you want to save the planet, feed the poor, reverse global warming, cure cancer, Google seasteading. Seasteading. That's where solutions are coming from, and that's where your creativity will flourish and change the world. The future belongs to the freaks, and I'll see you on the blue frontier.